Hello YouTube, hello everybody, it's been a little bit, um, to those couple of new subscribers, welcome, and obviously it's been a little while since my last video, but, um, I got a new job, so, uh, when stuff like that happens, obviously timetables are a little skew. Um, I've still been trying to figure out what I want to do as far as, um, getting a regular series of videos out, because people don't really stick around with the channel if there's not much in the way of videos. Totally get it. Or, well, not much in the way of videos, but um, if there's no, no new real content that's coming out. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, basically what I think I'm going to do is, after I get my little training days taken care of, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, like do a video in the evening if I'm not like super tired after all of that's done. And then during the morning when I'm busy with other stuff, I'll just let that upload in the background so I can do my thing and everything gets uploaded and everybody's happy. Sound fair? I think so. Then if and when my schedule changes, which probably will from days to nights, then at that point I'll just kind of reverse things. I think. We'll see. I should have more time to actually upload at that point, but <coughs> we shall see. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on my feed regarding topics that I've talked about previously. Obviously, uh, the Onion Kid, uh, also known as Ognision, is still doing his thing, and I can't really stress enough. I mean, you guys that have access to people, I mean... get interviews with these people, the people that have their side of the story, like we see how they're posting their side of the story, uh, supposedly on that uh, with Greg and Laney and all that stuff. Um, all right, now we take the other side of the, of the story then, and how we fire back is we get people that were connected to them, and we get them on camera, and we're like, okay, you know, what is your take on this? What's going on from your opinion? Because right now, ultimately, we're just seeing in mass one side of the story which is Greg and Laney's which I've said before is bullshit and I will keep saying is bullshit as he's he's even admitted that he is a liar at this point so really there is no reason to trust anything that he says and he's laughing all the way to the bank literally so it's time to start getting these people together that have been affected by him and start talking class action lawsuit start talking lawsuit you know get some actual action going because as long as people are doing this and nothing else all we're gonna do is see the same thing and then what's he gonna do he's gonna up the ante and go okay your move and what are we gonna what are we all gonna do just bitch about it on youtube anybody can do that um if anybody that is uh watching this has been linked to greg well that has been linked to greg if they want to give an objective side of the story like we're talking pros and cons, you know, just straight out the truth and nothing but. Drop me a uh, message. I will be more than happy to talk to you. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. We'll touch base and then we might do a video or something like that so we can get the word out and get a nice objective viewpoint going. Um, but moving along. So, um, like I said, I said earlier, I've seen a lot of stuff on my Facebook and on my uh, feeds and regarding a lot of stuff regarding the Predator versus Prey. Uh, one of the more recent ones that I've been watching a lot of was Rob Van Dyke. I think that's his name? Rob Dyke, excuse me. From uh, He does a lot of uh, Seriously Strange, which I enjoy because of its spooky content or just its the mysteries. He really does branch out into a lot of things. And... Um, he also has something that he's been doing called Why Would You Put That on the Internet? And I never really kind of figured what kind of slant he was on as far as any particular, because some people, you know, they'll talk about a lot of things, but they really don't have any particular slant. Myself, there are things that I like, there are things that I don't like, but good luck trying to put me in a particular party because I just don't fit in any of those boxes. And I won't fit in any of those boxes. If anything, I'm more of a, you know, reformist slash uh, maybe idealist if you really want to get down to it. To a certain degree, I think we're all idealistic. All flowery phrasing aside, though, um, he's been posting a couple of videos lately talking about the very things that I've been talking about, kind of like a predator versus prey model, just a lot of um, 
sneaky and clever manipulation of the crowd, largely by the Democratic Party, among other things, but other groups like Black Lives Matter, feminists, you know, people that like to start shit. And they make money off of it. Because as long as you're afraid, you're clinging on to them like they're the ones that are going to save you. All they do is just blame someone else. And if you want to say that I'm full of shit or a piece of, of shit, you know, that's that's all your opinion. That, that's, that's your opinion. You're welcome to it. But I ask you this, and I really would love some one of them to actually tell me this. What has your movement actually done for you? What has your movement actually done for you? And don't point to the past with the civil rights movements and stuff because those movements are nothing like this one, and those are the very people those movements would have kicked to the curb. So what have our movements been doing for us lately? They've marched a lot. They've yelled and screamed a lot. They've done a lot of false accusations. They've harassed a lot of people. They've made catchy buzz phrases by which to censor and alienate people, ironically in the name of free speech. Go figure. They have promoted principles that literally stand against... Well, not literally. Sorry. Grammar... Severe grammar abuse there. They... The policies that they push are in direct opposition to everything that they claim to stand for because they believe that no matter what they do, you're going to fall for it, that you're going to put up with it, and that you're going to basically do whatever they want. Um, and you'll, you'll see a lot of like catchy buzz phrases. I have to pull up my notebook here because I made some notes on this particular stuff. I, I do that a lot. I, I will make like notes and margins. I will fill up pages with notes and be like, okay, this is something for me to check into later. This is for me for something that I need to apply to now. But I did say for a while that I was going to do a video talking about different uh, catchphrases and such that you will commonly see in these movements. And if you're noticing a little bit of stuff in the background, well, that's because I'm trying to figure out what I want to do as far as the background goes. So there's a little bit of restructuring going here and there. So mind the mess. Sorry about the mess. And that will be fixed eventually. Um... All right, so um, from doing experience in a movement, I've seen a lot of stuff from the ground up. I've been on live stream. I've been on global rev. I've been, you know, I've done interviews in the freaking newspaper, and I've even done interviews for like Channel Two, Channel Four, and stuff. And you see a lot of different things in that environment. Everybody thinks that uh, activism is like you do this, you do this, and rah. But then there's the brutal, bone-crushing reality that kind of comes in with that, and that is that it is not what you think it is. It never was, really. Like anything else, there are politics to it, there are good and bad people, there are people that you want to hug, people that you want to choke, and lately, because um, this was way back in 2011, there's a lot of stuff that uh, really is kind of worrying. It, it, of course, this was the rise of kind of the cult mentality group think you have to be like this or else and i'm going to get into that a little bit more but needless to say i was very boot, always very kind of boots on the ground and i saw a lot of stuff and i saw a lot of interesting stuff and i also saw a lot of stuff that was very troubling and very worrying and one of the biggest things that i noticed is that it was a microcosm for politics as a whole. So I guess it's not surprising that when you look at a lot of members of that particular movement and you see who they're, who they're voting for and who they're openly supporting, unsurprisingly, it is the very people that are representations of the corruption they're supposedly against. Because they're not against it, they're just supporting it in a different form. They want their version of the same bullshit. They don't want to help you. They want to help themselves to your time, your attention, your money. They are using you. We call that fraudulent behavior, and that's exactly what it is. There was a um, there was a video that's probably still floating around YouTube about a Russian guy that came out, I think it was the 70s, and he talked about useful idiots. And he also talked about something that he noticed about these activists that helped support their particular cause, which is when the regime took over, they were the first people to be lined up and shot. Why? Why was this the case? Because they know everything about how that system works and when they know it and know it well enough and when they see just how screwed up things are they're going to be the first people to say uh no 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 and they're going to take those tools and overthrow that regime 
needless to say, I think it, 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 it comes as a surprise to no one that I would probably be one of those that would be the first to be lined up and shot. Some people might celebrate that, other people would be like, yeah, whatever, but, you know, it... That's, that is the serious truth, because you actually, you, you, you start to, to see really quickly, if you actually have any kind of objective mindset and you're not sipping from the Kool-Aid, you can see very quickly, after a certain point in time, that there are things that are very, very wrong. And you can see very quickly that these things are not to help the people. They are there to prey on them. And there are a lot of ways that that could possibly go and a lot of reasons as to possibly why. Um, but, I'll move on. Um, so needless to say, again, a lot of experience with that kind of thing. And I've definitely, I've been up in front of a camera before, I've been up in front of large amounts. Funny story to that. I actually didn't want to, and they kind of stuck me up in there. But I'm okay with that, because anytime that anybody, any one of them turns around and says, you don't know what you're talking about, you're a piece of shit, you're full of this, and I'm like, oh, you mean that guy that you put up in front of the cameras because... He's an amazing, upstanding person that can represent our movement and uh, actually knows what he's talking about and makes it a point to know what he's talking about. So stick us, stick us, blah, 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 blah. Wow. Well, there goes my public speaking cred. Statistically speaking, though, who does that make look worse? Here's this guy that you said he's full of shit simply because he disagrees with you or calls you out on your bullshit. When, five minutes before, you were telling the world how wonderful he was and how much he knows his stuff. You don't think people are going to look at that and go, gee, hmm, that only changed when he disagreed with you. And really, if, 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 you're, if you know your stuff so well, and you claim that this guy knows his stuff, and then you turn right around after the fact and say he doesn't know his stuff, does that say worse about him or you? So, I mean, if they want to keep making themselves, if they want to make themselves look bad more power to them. I can at least say that I've always been me, and that I've always been rather thorough and blunt to the point. I don't pull punches, I don't mince words, I tell it straight, I always have, and I always will. Regardless of whether you like it or not, does that mean I can be wrong? Absolutely. Anyone can be. I said this before when it came to uh, truth, actually. I was talking to someone else on my Facebook feed, and I said, um, we were talking about truth in general, and they were saying that there was no such thing as objective truth. And I've heard this before, and quite frankly, I'm calling bullshit on it. Because there is objective truth, we just don't want to find it. Because it might clash with our personal belief or our ego. Too many times I've heard people say, well, I don't believe that. And? And the way that they posture themselves is like there is this big... You know, stigma to that, like suddenly they're not believing that means the rest of the world is crashing down and, you know, everything has to kind of do this to fit into their personal bubble. And what I usually say to them every time, and this may throw you for a loop as well, I'm not sorry. Um, no, that's not it. Um, what I'm going to say to you is, quite bluntly, your beliefs are irrelevant. My beliefs are irrelevant. You want to talk about objective truth, which is basically the purest form of truth that you can get. It really comes down to what is and what is not. I can believe that this owl is a duck, and I can believe it wholeheartedly. No matter how much I identify this owl as a duck, it is still an owl. That does not change, and it will not change. Reality will not rewrite itself to fit within your bubble of it. Reality is wider than your views of it, than my views of it, and everyone's views of it. That is the nature of truth. That is why we have to keep looking for it. By, by coming up with an opinion, we begin the journey. By forming that opinion into a belief, we continue the journey. By consistently and constantly challenging our own beliefs, that is the only way we can objectively reach truth real truth, not just our personal truth, because our personal truth is basically whatever we believe that we know based on our experiences and current knowledge as we know it. Objective truth is simply the blind, naked, honest truth, laid out. It's not that it's not there. It's always been there. 
it's that we don't want to see it. We could see it. We choose not to. Because that might clash with this. That might clash with that. And then we go back to the people. Well, I can't believe that. So expand your worldview. Challenge your personal beliefs. I do. Every single day. Whether it's a topic that I like or a topic that I don't like, I constantly challenge my own beliefs and I challenge everyone in the audience to do the same. You should. Otherwise, you can't claim to be a truth seeker because you're full of shit. It's like going into a restaurant, okay? And the waiter says, what would you like? And you go, you know, I'm really feeling pasta. I want some lasagna, man. I haven't had lasagna in forever. I really want some lasagna. So, the waiter goes, okay, no problem. Comes back later, and there's this little itty bitty cup. We'll say, there's a little cup, like this, with a little dab of something in there, and you pick it up and you go, it smells like lasagna. There you go, sir. You have lasagna. And you look at the waiter and you go, Wait a minute. Uh-uh. No, no, no. This is not lasagna. This is a joke. Now I want you to go back there, and for the money that I gave you, I want you to make me some damn lasagna. But then the waiter turns around and says, we have a hateful patron in this establishment. Here we went and slaved to him and made him this hard cook, this, this hard, you know, baked lasagna. And he's not, instead of being gracious about it, he's riling up the stir. He wants more, as if he's so, as if he deserves it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you just charged me ten bucks for lasagna. You gave me this. That is not lasagna. That is a joke. I want some freaking pasta, dude. So all of a sudden, the dude turns around and starts accusing you of being a hater and all this other stuff. Think about the search for truth and evidence as much the same way. You want truth. You, you want lasagna. Or whatever dish you happen to like. And what you're presented with by BuzzFeed, by Bustle, by especially occupied Democrats, by the Huffington Post, by the Washington Post, by uh, KOS, which should rename itself to POS. They're giving you this cap, and they're telling you that's lasagna. And if you disagree with it, you're a hater, you're this, you're that, you're whatever label they can throw. The reality is, they're full of shit. They're trying to pass this off as lasagna. Or, in a more non-direct term, they are trying to pass off bullshit as truth. And this is why I had an argument with someone that said that all beliefs are equal. Because that's like saying that are you going to tell me that this is equal to a big plate of lasagna? Because if you are, you're fooling yourself you should probably get your head checked and get a reality check. This is not equal to this, and it never will be. Flowery phrasing. Likewise, you cannot take a portion of truth. You cannot take a personal truth and call it the truth, because that is simply impossible. And if you do such things, you will never actually come to truth. And for those of us that actually like to claim to be truth seekers, that the, one of the biggest difference between someone that seeks truth and someone that's just kind of puffing up their chest to look good in social media is that they cannot tolerate. They won't tolerate it. Much like me saying, uh, that's a joke, give me the real deal. I'm not going to accept this. You promised me this, you're going to deliver this, or you can fuck off. That is how I am when it comes to truth. Objective, honest to God, truth. Not your personal truth. Not your beliefs or what you refuse to believe because you can't crawl out of your personal bubble and be mature enough to challenge your own beliefs, which probably came from a per another person or a group of people that thought for you anyway. 
as this election and this these last eight years have certainly proven is the case for many people on all sides of the board. Um, objective truth. It's all or nothing. And there is no way we should accept anything less. We should never accept anything less. But that's what we're doing. We're accepting the cap pull and saying, they've given us this wonderful lasagna, whatever will we do without them? Anytime you hear about Obamacare, Planned Parenthood's another big one, or lately anything involving LGBT, it's much like that. They are offering, they are saying they're giving you lasagna and they're giving you this. Yep. Oh, I just dropped it. And I'm being, actually, I'm giving them credit. They're giving you this, they're promising you this. They're not giving you real data, they're not giving you real facts, they're giving everything that is skewed to fit their personal narrative. And they know that if they use the right catchphrases like that, they can get you from this to an emotionally reactive mob mentality environment. One that they can prey on, get solicit donations from, and attention from. They're not there to help you, and they never were. They're there to help themselves to what you have. 